Amen. You better thank God you're still here. Amen. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Haggai. Haggai 2 and 8. The book of Haggai 2 and 8. Thank you, Jesus. One of the weird books, but it's a good, good word. When you got it, say amen. Haggai 2 and 8. Haggai 2 and 8. Today, this year, we're talking about goals for 2022. Uh, raise your hand if you have goals. I want to see it again. And the reason why we're doing that is if you have a goal, first of all, you need to let it be known. A goal can't be anything you keep to yourself. Because the reason why is how will you hold yourself accountable? You can't have a goal and say, oh, it's my little secret private goal. Because if it's your secret private goal, no, uh, who will know if you actually went towards it? A goal is something you proclaim. Now, what if it's something private, something personal? Then you proclaim it to a friend that you love, a friend that you trust. Each and every one of us in here has a friend that you can talk to. Even if, if you don't have a friend, you might have a child, a daughter, or a son. You can speak to your child. But the thing is, a goal is something you proclaim to someone else. Haggai 2 and 8. It says, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Raise your hand if you have financial issues in 2021. Raise your hand. We won't see it. I, I rebuke that curse. 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 Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. God says the silver is mine. He says the gold is mine. He says, if that's the case, let's read the next verse. It says, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give you peace, saith the Lord of hosts. What that means for you and I is going forward in 2022, God is going to give you peace in your finances. You better claim that today. Peace in your finances. And what that means is, God is going to quell your financial stress. He's going to teach you how to deal with the financial tumults. Even when you come up short, if God is on your side, he will always make a way. I remember when, I remember a long, long, long time ago. Long story short, I, I have a baby mama, baby mama, amen. And long story short, they put child support on me. Oh, okay, amen. Well, pay your child support, Pastor. Okay, oh, they put child support on me. I didn't know that they were put child support on. And if you, hopefully you young brothers don't go through this. If you ever get anybody put child support on you, they came and took all the money at one time. So I went and got my paycheck, you know, it was, it was payday. And I saw a check for $110. I said, I started screaming. Ah, I screamed like a little, ah, I said, child support. I started screaming, $110. And as a teacher, we only get paid once a month. So that means for 30 days, I had to live off $110. I was 24 years old. So I wasn't financially disciplined. I ain't the old man that I am now. But God paid rent with $110. God paid cargo with $110. God paid insurance with $110. God got me food with $110. That's when I learned you can trust God. You don't have to trust the job. You ain't got to trust the bank account. You put your trust in God and he'll make a way out of nowhere. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. I proclaim that for you in 2022. That you see God open doors and do the amazing and do the impossible. It didn't make sense. I, I didn't get a loan from nobody. I couldn't call my mama because her mama wasn't rich yet. Amen. Mama wasn't rich yet. This was 20, I was 24. She didn't have that kind of money she got now. I couldn't call nobody and get a loan. There was no uh, cash, there was no payday loan. That didn't exist. I literally had $110. But God will make a way out of no way. God will make a way out of no way. Next, turn with me to Joel 2 and 21. The book of Joel, 2 and 21. The book of Joel, 2 and 21. Joel, 2 and 21. Joel, 2 and 21. When you guys say amen, Joel, 2 and 21. It says, fear not, O land. Then it says, be glad and rejoice. 
For the Lord will do great things. Let me say it again. It says, fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. God says, stop being afraid. God says, stop being afraid. He says, in fact, I want you to rejoice. Be happy. Well, 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 well I got problems, Pastor. God says, rejoice. Uh, uh, my money funny. God says, rejoice. Uh, I was diagnosed with COVID. God says, rejoice. Uh, I got high blood pressure. I got diabetes. They say I got the cancer. God says, rejoice. And if you keep reading it, it, it says, for the Lord will do great things. If you are spiritually happy, if you are spiritually infused, God will do great things for you. What does that mean? God rejoices when we're happy. See, the thing is, God loves you and you love God. That means your relationship with him. So when he looks down and he sees your life and he sees joy, he says, open the doors. He says, open the doors. He says, close the doors. Because you are his. Remember, Jesus says, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Even when you go through hard times, God is going to make sure at the end of that trial that there will be joy for you. So if you learn how to rejoice in your pain, God will do great things for you. And some of y'all had a painful 2021. Some of y'all had to bury loved ones. Some of y'all had to go to, how many of y'all went to more than two funerals last year? I went to about 17 I ain't never been to that many funerals in my life. But the thing is, God says, he will give you joy for your tears. He says, those that sow in tears will reap in joy. So we got to learn how to just, you know what, say, thank you, Jesus. Give it up to God. Give him praise. Be happy about whatever you're going through. Because God is going to see to it that at the end of this road, you will have joy. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for joy. Thank you, Jesus, for joy. Thank you, Jesus, for joy. Let's read the next word, Joel 2 and 22. God says, again, be not afraid, ye beasts of the field. For the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree will bear her fruit, and the fig tree and the vine will yield their strength. God says, you've been in the wilderness. How many of y'all been in the wilderness? How, uh, time out. How many of y'all in the wilderness right now? Wilderness means you had a place in your life where you're unsure. That's what, raise your hand if you're in the wilderness. Raise your hand if you're in the wilderness. Amen. See, there's nothing wrong with being in the wilderness. All the wilderness means is, is that you got lost. Uh, you got lost along your trail. Life is tricky. Life is tricky. And the reason why life is tricky because we have a lot of choices. And sometimes we pick the wrong thing and we end up in the wrong place. But God says, I knew you would be there. God knew that you would be in the place that you're in right now. God knew that you would be in the wilderness that you find yourself in right now. And guess what? He's already made a way for you to escape that thing. He's already made a way to have success in this wilderness. And it says right here in Joel 2 and 22, don't be scared. Don't be scared, as they say on, on uh, Tyler Perry. Don't be scared. God is already going to make a way. He says, don't be afraid. And then he says, for the pastors in the wilderness will spring. He says, you have pastors in your wilderness. And what that means is this. You've been in your wilderness working. You've been in your wilderness working. Uh, see, the thing is, none of you in here are homeless. As a matter of fact, we passed by home. I just asked you about when we was on the way here. None of you in here slept outside last night. Uh, so that means you live somewhere. And the thing is, while you're in that home, you're working. It's crazy. Everybody in this room is employed. Give God a hand clap. Clap, clap for yourself. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What's that, Grandma? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There it is. 
Everybody in this room, she gonna say, come on up, grandbaby, come on up. Just go, come on, don't fall, baby. Just say it. Yeah, amen. Give her a hand clap, amen. She loves St. Jesus. Everybody in this room has a job. God has already showed you, I'm going to provide for you, even in your wilderness. And some of y'all say, well, I don't make enough money. We just talked about that. God is going to open the floodgates. Some of you are going to get promotions on your job. Some of y'all won't get fired from your job, and God got a better job for you. One of the best things that ever happened to me is when I got fired. I used to be an accountant in Newport Beach. I thought I was smooth, but I just had to wear a suit and tie, carry a briefcase, and, and I was the little smooth Negro. And I went to work one day, and they gave me a paper that says, fire. I said, oh, no. I, I just couldn't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I was fired. At that job, I made $11.25 an hour. I was fresh out of college. I was fired. Long story short, I had a kid already. Your, your cousin was born. How am I going to feed this kid? How am I going to pay rent? How, how am I going to do these things? But when you put God first, he will make a way for you in your wilderness. And I went from that job making twenty, making eleven dollars an hour to making twenty-two dollars an hour. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. <laughs> See the thing is, don't put your trust in in a job. Put your trust in a God. Don't put your trust in a job. Put your trust in a God. When I got fired, I couldn't see $22 an hour. I saw I lost $11 an hour. But a, 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 one of my, my aunties called me. She said, baby, it's going to be all right. She says, keep going. Keep believing in yourself. Don't you quit on yourself. Don't you stop right here. Don't you stop right here. Don't you quit right here. Because God is going to make a way. Keep believing God for the next thing and the next horizon that he has for you. Turn next, go next, go next to Joel 2 and 23. Joel 2 and 23. Joel 2 and 23. It says, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately. And he will cause to come down the rain for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Uh, rain, rain, rain. What do we know about rain? That's where we get our water from. What do we know about rain? If it doesn't rain, nothing grows. So God says, he sent the former rain. That was rain before. And he said, I sent the latter rain. And look at that last part. Look at that last part. Look at that last part. It says, the latter rain in the first month. What month is this? This is the first month. This is the first month. Did it rain all last week? Yes. God has sent you rain. What does that mean for you and I? This is the month for you to start planting your seeds. This is the month for you to start planting your seeds. This is the month where you set your goal and plant your seeds. This is the month where you start putting it in and putting the work in. Because God says, whatever you plant in January is going to start to grow in March. Whatever you plant in January is going to start to grow in February. By the end of 2022, whatever you plant this month will grow. And some of y'all got big dreams. Some of y'all got big things you've been working on. And God says, he just wait for you to put that seed in the ground. Water that seed. He says, if you put it down here this month, by this year, you will see it. Believe God and trust God and he will make a way. He will see to it that whatever you plant this month, he will see to it that it comes through. He will see to it that it comes through. Let's go to Joel 2 and 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat and the fast shall overflow with wine and oil. Verse 25. Here it is. Verse 25. Verse 25. And I will restore to you the years that were lost when the locust had eaten it. And I will restore to you the years that were lost when the locust had eaten it. Some of y'all had hashtag fails last year. Some of y'all had hashtag fails fail the year before. Some of y'all have been failing for the last 10 years. Some of y'all have been failing for the last 10 months. God says he's going to restore your failures. I want you to think about this. She's good. God is going to restore 
your failures. What does that mean? You worked on something and it didn't work out. Failure. You had a job and got fired. Failure. Uh, you, your credit is, is bad. Failure. Uh, you tried to buy a car and they repossessed it. Failure. You bought a car and drove it without insurance and had a car accident and they took it away. Failure. Whatever the failure is, God says, if you plant in this month, he will restore. And not only will you have what you had before, you're going to have more. Matter of fact, turn to Job 42 and 10. Job 42 and 10. Book of Job 42 and 10. Job 42 and 10. Job, thank you, please. 42 and 10. And you guys say amen. amen. Job 42 and 6. And, and, says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Job had gone through a wilderness. He had gone through a tough time. We talked about this last Sunday. He went through something hard. He was in the wilderness of life. It was rough, ugly, and terrible where he was. But when he started to pray, God gave him double for his trouble. What does that mean for you and I? We just read in the book of Joel where God says this. He says he will restore the things that you lost from the past. And not only will he restore it, if you're faithful, if you're prayerful, if you're loving, if you're giving, God will give you double for what you went through. You want God to bless you with double, plant this year, plant this seed in this month. Because you're going to plant and you got to trust God and say, you know what, God? The last 10 years have been rough. The last three years have been rough. Uh, the, the last part of my life has been rough. God, can you bless me with double? And I promise you, Lord, that I will continue to serve you. See, the reason why some of us don't get blessed, because if some of us get blessed, we go the wrong way. I've watched some people in this church, uh, when they didn't have a car, you saw them every Sunday. They'd show up. Bing, they was at church. As soon as they got a job and a car, they gone. Some of us can't handle our blessings. God will never give you nothing that will take you away from him. So the thing is, ask God for double to restore the dreams that he's given you. Amen. Turn me to the book of Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34. We're going to go to verse 25. Ezekiel 34. Go to verse 25. And we're going to read 25 to 31. Ezekiel 34, verse 25 says this, And I will make them a covenant of peace, and cause the evil beasts to seize out of their land, and they shall dwell safely, safely in their wilderness and sleep in the woods. And I will make them and the places round about them a hill of blessing, and I will cause the showers to come down upon them in their season, and there shall be showers of blessings. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and they shall know that I am the Lord their God, when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies. God says it. This is a season where he wants to bless you. God really does want to bless you. But do you want to be blessed? See, the thing is, it's hard to want something for somebody they don't want nothing for themselves. How many of y'all ever been in that position? You praying for somebody, you trusting for somebody to do something right, and they don't want to do nothing themselves. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to be successful. God wants you to be happy. God wants you to be married. God wants you to have that house. God wants you to have that vacation. God wants you to have whatever it is that your heart desires. But are you willing to do what it takes to get there? Yeah. The thing is, you have to be willing to do your part. God is not going to do what you can do for yourself. Let me say it again. God is not going to do what you're able to do for yourself. So the thing is, this year, may set a goal to say, you know what, God? I'm going to do my part. I'm going to do my part. And God, I'm going to trust you to see if you do your part. Do your part. And see what God does in your life. Go down to Ezekiel 24, 34 or 29. 
Ezekiel 34 and 29. It says, and I will raise them up from the plant of renown, and they shall be no more consumed with hunger in their land, neither bear the shame of the heathen anymore. God says this, going forward in 2022, you will not experience shame. Going forward in 20, 2022, you will not experience shame. What is shame? Shame means you did something and got exposed. Shame means that something happened to you and everybody found out about it. Shame means that you experienced something and it was an embarrassment. I've had shame. Uh, I've lived through shame. That's why I'm so bold now because I already know what it feels like to have your business all out there and everybody knows what's going on. I know what it feels like to walk through and everybody, and they're whispering and talking about you. God says going forward in 2022, there will be no shame in your life. He says, you won't have to be embarrassed anymore. And one of the reasons why he says that is because he's going to put that thing behind you. That thing that happened that embarrassed you is behind you. See, God ain't like man. He don't dig in the crates and go look at your history. He looks at you now and at your future. Because the best you is the one that's in the future. It's not the one that's now. Matter of fact, turn to Isaiah 38, 17. Isaiah 38 and 17. Isaiah 38 and 17. Amen. Isaiah 38. We're almost done. Isaiah 38 and 17. This is, this is heavy. I, I, I shed a tear when I read this. It says, Behold, for peace I had great bitterness. Pause. Behold, for peace, I had great bitterness. How many of y'all ever had to hold your tongue so there'd be peace around you? How many of y'all ever had to withhold your feelings so there'd be peace in your environment? God says, I had to hold, he know that you held your peace and that it hurt you. He know that you held your peace and it cut you deep inside. And he says, he know that was a bitter pill for you to swallow. But he know that you did it for the greater good. Sometimes you have to hold your peace at your job. Your boss says something crazy to you, but you know, you know, I got to be quiet. I got to pay these bills. Hold your peace. Some of y'all held your peace to your mother and your father. When, when, you, when they accused you of something and they came down on you and they cut you with hard words. But you walked away. Some of y'all held your peace with your friends when they said something about you that wasn't true. When they slandered your name. When they put you out there. You held your peace. God says, I'm going to read it again. He says this. Behold, for peace I had great bitterness. But then he says this. But thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. God says this. He saw your sacrifice of peace when you was bitter. He saw you sacrifice and lay down for your family so that your family could stay together. He saw when you sacrificed and was quiet when your best friend went against you. And he says this, I put your sins behind you. He's releasing your soul from that pain and that anxiety. He says, when you go forward in 2022, you won't experience that bitterness, bitterness anymore. In fact, he says, I'm delivering you from it. And he says, your sins are behind you. What that means is God has put your worst behind you. And he says, go forward. He says, don't carry no baggage into 2022. He says, going forward, you're not going to carry that sin from the past. You're going forward with a new slave. Amen. God says when you step into 2022, you stepping in with newness. You stepping in with purpose. He says old things have passed away. Behold, I have something new for you. God says go forward with that new. He says the sins are behind you. He says I have something new in front of you. Amen. Give God a hand clap for the new. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And the last thing, turn to Romans 12 and 17. Romans 12 and 17. Romans 12 and 17. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 12 and 17. It says, Re Repay no man evil for evil. Provide things of honest in the sight of all men. Repay no man evil for evil. 
Provide things honest in the sight of all men. What does that mean for us? Don't repay evil for evil. Uh, that's hard to do. Y'all young. Y'all ready. You got a lot of energy. You can fight still. You can cuss real good. And, and you can do all those things. And God says, sometimes hold your peace. He says, don't repay evil for evil. Let's keep reading. Let's re keep reading. Matter of fact, go down to verse 21. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Last year was a hard year, but look at the truth. You had more good days than bad days. When the, it's interesting, uh, I, I went to marriage counselor once and then they said this. Uh, the counselor, he was so slick. He said, uh, how long y'all been married? And I said, 12 years. And we was young then. And he says, uh, how many of those were bad days? You know, my wife was like, oh, a few of them. But then she thought about it. And the counselor said, if there are 365 days out of a year, you said you had 15 bad days. That means you had 340 good days. The thing is, you have more good than bad in your life. God is giving you more good than bad in your life. So the thing is, he says, since I give you more good, sometimes you got to overcome the bad with the good that's in you. God made you good. Every person in this room is good. I don't know too many bad people. I do know some bad people. I don't know too many bad people. Some of y'all, you got good. And use that good energy to overcome the negative energy. Use that good love that's deposited in you to overcome the adversity that you face at home or in your job or on the streets. God has put good in you. Some of you are in relationships. And, and when you get into a relationship, the devil says, I do. And it's funny, when I got married, we was all standing there with the little warriors, amen. And, and what we didn't realize is that Satan was there too. And when I said, they said, Mike Amber, do you take this woman to be your girl? I said, I was crying, I said, I do. And, and the, the devil said, hallelujah, I do too. You don't realize that the devil gets in your relationships. That's in the book of Genesis 3 and 15. He's there right with you. He wants to see mother and father tear each other apart. He wants to make baby mama and baby daddy enemies. So you have to put on this shield called love. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. You have to let love reign and cover you. You can't get mad at every offense because you have to understand that the devil is in there trying to tear you apart because he wants that child. He wants your children. He wants to destroy their lives. So he knows he tear you apart that he can get to those babies. But you got to say, you know what? I'm going to stand here and I'm going to take one for the team. I'm going to be embarrassed and take one for the team. I'm going to be low and I'm going to take one for the team so that God can push you through. So you can cover your package, which is the love of your life, your children. And the very, very, very last thing. And the very, very last thing. Go to 1 Chronicles 21 and 1. 1 Chronicles 21 and 1. And we're done after this. 1 Chronicles 21 and 1. Mm, this is crazy. 1 Chronicles. 21 and 1. Before I read this, uh, go ahead and highlight there. Deacon. First Chronicles 21 and 1. We're going to read verses 1 through 2. Uh, the world says every New Year's you should make a resolution. That's what the world says. So since I, I'm 52, I've been making a resolution since I was 9 years old. What happens to 98% of the resolutions that you make? You fail. You make a resolution to lose weight, you eat more. You make a resolution to be better with your finances, and you get a new credit card and lose your mind. You make a resolution to be more respectful, whatever it is, to stop cussing. One year, I made a resolution to stop cussing. I lasted exactly three days. I mean, I was like, oh, did something happen? And I, did, and I said, oh, man, there it is. The world tempts you to make resolutions. Let's see what God said. Let's look here. So 1 Corinthians, 1 Chronicles 21 and 1. And Satan stood against up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Job and to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel and Bersheba, even then, and bring the number of them that I might know it. Skip down to verse 7. Skip down to verse 7. Skip down to verse 7. 
And verse 7 says this, And the Lord God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. All right. What Satan wants you to do is look at your past. Satan wants you to take an inventory of your life. So every December 31st, you have to look at your life. What I did do, what I didn't accomplish, where I should be, where I, where I should do this and should do that. And God does not want you to look at your past to judge your life. God does not want you to look at your yesterday to judge your today. Because here's what happened. If you go and look at your past life, only two things can happen. Either you're going to have pride or you're going to have pain. When you look back over your life, either you're going to have pride or you're going to have pain. And both of those are sins to God. Because they will cause you to do something that's not good to God. Satan went to hell because of pride. And pain can cause you to pick up alcohol, pick up drugs, pick up something. Because you look at your life and you say, oh, I'm a disappointment. Oh, I didn't do this. Oh, I didn't do that. Both of those are lies. God says the only day that you have is now. And maybe tomorrow. You don't have yesterday. You can't fix what you did in the last 10 years. The only thing you can do is fix today and plan for tomorrow. So stop worrying about what happened yesterday. You can't go back and replace what you did. You can't, uh, if the milk spilled, you can't get it up and put it back into the cup. You have to say, you know what, that's then. I got the now and I'm going to plan for tomorrow. So don't let the devil tempt you and trick you and think at you thinking over your life. I remember one year, I, it was Christmas Eve, and I was looking at some letters, and I was like, oh my God, I'm not here. And I started crying, and, and God like, fool, shut up. Look at how good God's been to you. But when you look at your mistakes, you forget your victories. When you look at your mistakes, you forget the over things that you overcome. God wants you to look at your triumphs, not your defeats. Michael Jordan is one of the greatest basketball players ever played. But he lost many games. In fact, he sat on the bench, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and half of his senior year. You don't hear about that. You just hear about Jordan and these expensive tennis shoes that you buy. You don't hear about his defeats. The thing is, everybody that's a winner has lost some days. I don't know anybody that's undefeated. Mayweather's undefeated. That's a lie out of the pit of hell. Mayweather lost a whole lot of fights when he was, what they call that, when they practicing. Amateur. He he got his butt beat down when he was an amateur. So the thing is, everybody that's a winner has lost some fights. But it's not the ones that you lose that count. It's the victories that you have. And God says, going forward in 2022, your life will be victorious. You will be an overcomer. You will be a winner. But here's what you got to do. Plant now. This is the month to plant. So whatever you want God to do in 2022, you start doing it right now. You start planting that seed today. You start making it happen today. And you plant this month and watch God give you a harvest throughout the year. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Everybody say just because something didn't work out in your favor. Don't give up just because something didn't work out in your favor. What the devil tries to do is communicate to you that you aren't good enough. He tries to communicate to you that you ain't gonna make it. It's interesting, uh, there's a singer called Aaliyah. More than a woman. A beautiful young lady, she died on an airplane, an airplane accident. Long story short, Aaliyah was on a show called American Idol. This is way back in the day. This is before uh, y'all even, y'all weren't even born yet. This was in the 80s. She was on a TV show. It was, I think it was Dancing with the Stars, some stars or something. You can look it up. Long story short, 
she lost every time. She was a failure. But she never stopped. Just because she didn't win that show didn't mean that she would have to, that wasn't gonna stop singing. And, and you know the rest of that. She ended up becoming an amazing singer and she did the rest of that. The thing is, you will have some defeats. That's called life. You will have some bad days. If some of your mistakes will catch up to you. But if you put God first, he says, I will put that mistake behind you and he will open the gates of heaven and send out his blessings for you. But the important thing is, keep sowing your seed. This is the month for you to sow your seed. This month, whatever you're asking God for, make steps in, into that thing. Uh, we're going to have a fast maybe coming up in like uh, the next week or two. So we're going to fast for like two or three days and uh, we're going to ask God to help us to get to that thing that we want God to do for us. And we're going to make sure that whatever you're trusting God for, it will happen. So this month, we're going to put our foot in action and we're going to fast and pray for the things that you're asking God for. How many of y'all have got a goal for this year? I do, I do, I do. I do, I do. Amen. So this is the, this is the month of harvest. This is the month to put the labor in. This is the month to do the work. Start working toward that thing. Don't sit on your butt and say, I, it, I, I, no, I don't have, that's not how God will operate. God operates on principle. God operates on principle. And the principle is faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. If you want God to do something, you got to do your part. Because when God created you, it, it says in the book of Psalms, Psalms uh, 72, it says 67 and 7, it says he made you a God. He made you just like him. You have two hands just like him. You have a brain just like him. You have feet. You can walk and talk just like him. You have the power to speak into reality. So use your God-given power and start to do the work. Start to do the work. Start to labor love. Amen. Anybody have any words? We wrap this up. Anybody have any words? Anybody? Before, before we hold hands and pray, I'm going to pray over each and every one of you. And the reason why is this is 2022. And my prayer for you is this. Be blessed. Be healthy. Be loving. Be giving. Be prayerful. Be healthy. Be loving. Be giving. And I'm speaking that over you for a reason. When you go forward to overcome and do something that's never been done before in your family, you will face adversity. I was the first one to graduate from college in my family. It was adversity. I got kicked out of college twice. Adversity. When you try to get married, you're going to catch hell. I'm the first one to get married in my family. Adversity. When you try to buy a home, I bought a, I was, it's adversity. You're going to catch hell when you try to do something that ain't never been done. That don't mean you stop. You continue to go forward. So I'm praying over you a spirit of health in your mind. The Bible says, be renewed by your thoughts. Start thinking good and you will have good. Start thinking good and you have good. And the last thing I'm gonna say, my wife always says to me, you always happy. And the reason why is, I know it can always be worse. Sometimes bad things happen to me, uh, you know, like everybody else. I remember uh, this happened last, last year, 2021. Uh, I was riding my, my, driving my truck on the beach illegally, like I do every night. And long story short, the truck got stuck in the sand by the beach. I was at like, uh, from here to Compton High School, that's how far I was on the beach. So no tow truck can get out there. So I'm laying on the beach, I spent the night on the beach. I'm there all night long. People ride by on their bikes, but they all taking, taking pictures. I was on people's Instagram and stuff. They were just videotaping me. Look at this fool stuck on the beach. The thing was, God knew I was going to be there. But more importantly, he made a way for me to get out of that thing. So it's not the embarrassment. You're going to go through some things. But God will always make a way to get you through that thing. And, and like I said, I, I had to pay rent with a $110 check. I want you to think about that. And some of y'all got a decent little job. Y'all working in these little chicken places. Y'all making y'all little money. Just, just imagine, you make your little money and you ain't got no, you ain't got no, I ain't, I ain't hating on your chicken. Hey, my first job was Burger King. I ain't no hater, bro. 
I was a janitor too, baby. I did all that. But, but uh, no, I was a janitor. But the point is, what I'm saying is, you got these jobs, but you ain't got to pay no rent. You just live in your house, basically, and just pay your cell phone bill and buy your own stuff. I had to pay a whole bunch of stuff for $110. If God could do that for me through faith, he can deliver you through your thing. Amen. Give God a hand clap. Hallelujah. Everybody grab a hand. Grab a hand. Hey, Amber, love you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the word that went forward. We thank you, Father, for 2022. Father, you said 2021 is behind us, Father. We're leaving that baggage behind us. We're leaving those sins behind us. We're leaving those disappointments behind us. And we're going forward this month, sowing our goals and sowing the things that you want us to accomplish this month. Help these young people, Father, to sow this month, to get through the, the fields and the wilderness that they're in, Father, and to see a way of hope and life. Squeeze the hand next to you. I squeeze life into that hand. I squeeze prosperity into that hand. I squeeze vision and purpose into that hand. That these young people come to hand and not to tell. That they become victorious and never defeated. And that no weapon formed against them shall prosper, Father. We block negative words, Father. We block words of disappointment, Father. And we speak hope, love, and prosperity into their life. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.